Now from the News for Jack's I team, safe streets from murders to robberies. The rash of violent crime in Jacksonville is a top concern for all of you. And for the first time, our cameras are allowed so we can give you a front row seat to what the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office is doing to stop the hundreds of rival gang members who are responsible for much of the violent crime. I team investigator Vic Michelucci spent several days and nights with specialized units so you can see how they're taking guns, drugs and killers off the street. Look, we hear you. You're tired of crime in your community. Learning about shooting after shooting on the news. Concerned about your loved ones. Breaking news, a deadly shooting. Police are on the scene of a double shooting. Later, there's an SUV down there with bullet holes in it. And we know that many of you want to know what police are doing to not just solve these crimes, but hopefully prevent them. You're under arrest. You got him. Go ahead. So I you think I got a gun in my pocket? Is that what you think, bro? So for years, I have been asking the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office for an inside look at their violence reduction plan from a detective's eyes. And now for the first time, we've been given access to show you how these investigations play out from start. Seal that house, so everything around it, I don't want anything in and out. To finish. All my detectives, my gang guys, Everybody's working this. As law enforcement uses new technology, teamwork, and tactics to stop the violence. Is it a solution to a lot of the problems plaguing the city? I believe it is. I've worked in news here for more than a decade. I've never even gotten remotely close to this kind of access. It's not even noon and police get the call. There's a deadly shooting on Emerson Street. We quickly head to the scene with Sergeant Johnny Cook. He's in charge of the gang unit. Do they have a uh, getaway vehicle? They have a description, a color of a vehicle, but witnesses are saying that shooters came from multiple directions, so. So this is an ambush? It was definitely an ambush. Somebody was watching him. They knew exactly where he was or where he was going to be, and they waited for the opportunity to do what they wanted to do. Signs point to this being a gang hit. A man is dead, a woman is injured. That man had been on the unit's watch list as someone likely to be a perpetrator of violence or a target. He is involved with people that have been going back and forth with these shootings. These are all retaliation shootings. As homicide detectives and the gang unit gather details, evidence technicians quickly collect shell casings. In this case, there are dozens. Those will be rushed to JSO's in-house firearms lab. Here, ballistics experts show us how they enter the casings into a machine, looking to see if they match with shells from other shootings. At the same time, they're test firing guns that they've legally seized or recovered a database could connect those guns to casings found at shooting scenes. Having Niven and having the ability to link firearms to different scenes that in the past we didn't even know were linked, it creates a whole new picture. It gives us new information as far as witnesses, potential suspects, and it allows the investigators that are working those diff different cases to come together where before they never knew that they had a related case. Back on the streets, we catch up with JSO's Community Problem Response Unit, or CPR. This is a team of tactical detectives now chasing leads. We've got the house around and out, and we're working further from there. Police intelligence has led them to this home, where they believe two brothers involved are hiding out. Lieutenant Ricky Valentine leads the operation. The team carefully surrounds the property and quickly spots a vehicle matching the one from this morning's murder. So they think that some of the suspects from the shooting just a couple of hours ago are there. They're banging on the house right now. They've got it surrounded. As the sun sets, detectives work to get a search warrant. And then the SWAT team comes in. That evening, police find the two men that they were looking for. They were nearby. And then they take them in for questioning. They're currently in jail on other charges. A third man was also arrested after a separate traffic stop. The case remains open. There are a very small number of people in the city who are causing a lot of the violence. Ugly. 
Assistant Chief Michael Paul runs the Crime Gun Intelligence Center. This office of hand-picked detectives uses new technology and police intelligence to locate shooters fast. But the focus is on stopping the violence before it happens by identifying those who are shooters, those who are likely to be shooters, or people who could become targets. Teaming up with the state attorney's office, the center opened in 2019. News for Jack's I-Team records show 389 people were shot that year in Jacksonville. 554 were shot in 2020, 18 in 2022, showing a slight drop, even as the city's population grows. There are a lot of people that say, all this money, all these resources are going to police, and we're still looking at shootings all across Jacksonville. We're still looking at a very high murder rate. What's your response to that? The number of firearms we recover um, on a daily basis, the number of people that get arrested for gun crimes on a daily basis, and we use analytics, um, we use intelligence, we use all sorts of things to identify these people. And I cannot imagine what the city would look like if we weren't doing the work we're doing. Here's the proactive part. We're now part of a deployment all throughout the city. And in this traffic stop, police pull over a car full of teenagers, which undercover detectives had been watching. They tell us these gang members are suspected in a number of shootings, including a homicide. They quickly see a passenger has a small amount of drugs. Hey, 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 cooperate. Hey, cooperate. I understand. So you think I got a gun in my pocket? Is that what you think, bro? The rest of the car comes up clean, and the others are free to go, as there isn't enough evidence to hold them for any other crimes. But even if they do get spooked for tonight, that's a win for tonight. Hopefully, yeah. you know, they know the police are out doing, doing our job, being, you know, being aggressive, you know, within the, within the bounds of the law. You know, they're not going to go do a shooting tonight. These tactical teams are well aware that police practices are in the spotlight, and they're walking a fine line between fighting violent crime aggressively and what some would consider government overreach. But it is not stopping them from citywide deployments like this one, bringing in task forces to run license plates, pulling over vehicles connected to crimes. Tonight, on the west side, they find a whole lot of drugs. It appears that these uh, crack rocks are positive for fentanyl as well, so. Fentanyl, yes sir and a large amount of guns, which will run through the lab, so detectives can look for links to other crimes. There's no magic fairy dust that's gonna stop this. It's just being able to do the best we can with what we have, and I think we do. We also went along with detectives and local pastor Garland Scott. They visit gang members and those linked with violent crimes, offering them a way out, jobs, housing, resources, a chance to turn their lives around. If not, the team tells them they're likely to end up in prison or dead. Pastor Scott says about four in 10 people that they contact end up reaching out, asking for help, getting out of a life of violence. So, Vic, did you know that, you know, all of this was going on behind the scenes before you had the opportunity to do this story? So I had a lot of knowledge about how JSO worked, but I had no idea of this scale of how intricate it really was. Not to mention, during our time shooting, Tark and Joy, over the course of several days, we responded to a deadly police-involved shooting. They arrested two cold case murder suspects on warrants, and the team did a whole lot of surveillance on cases that they have not yet made arrests in. You did a great job of taking so many elements and putting them into one compressed story. And you know, these units, they expanded a lot when Sheriff T.K. Waters took office in November. So what's his plan for the future with this violence reduction strategy? I actually just sat down with him and he says that he wants to expand it significantly. More detectives, more resources, and of course, more budgets for this. He says this is only a part of a solution for cutting down on violent crime, but he knows it will take patience. You're not gonna solve this issue overnight, and it takes the community to buy in. 
Our conversation on safe streets continues tomorrow morning with Jacksonville Sheriff TK Waters. We'll talk about what is next in stopping violent crime here in your neighborhood. That's tomorrow at 730 on The Morning Show.